Welcome everyone. I would like to share with you all what could be perhaps the greatest Star Wars theory of all time. I'm going to cover how Luke Skywalker can and most likely will be alive in the next Star Wars movie. And I'm also going to touch on a very intriguing theory to do with the great books of the Jedi. How Yoda mysteriously appeared and destroyed these books. I'm also going to touch on a secret link between the Force, lightsabers, and kyber crystals. Also, the secret link between Snoke, Rey, and Kylo. And finally, I'm going to cover a personal theory that I have on Finn, linking back to the Force Awakens that's sure to make you do a double take. I hope you all enjoy this great theory. And I hope the creators of Star Wars will see it as well and take note and hopefully incorporate these elements into their upcoming movies. So how could Luke be alive in the next Star Wars movie? Everybody thinks that he died at the end of The Last Jedi. But the reality is we don't actually know that Luke died. We saw him get fatigued and collapse. His body vanished and his clothes crumpled up. But we don't actually know that he died. We know for a fact that he didn't die from injury or disease or old age. People speculate that he must have died because he appeared to go in the same manner that Yoda died. And it's true, when you look back at that pivotal scene of Yoda's passing, Yoda was fatigued, he collapsed, and his body vanished and the clothes crumpled up. The same thing that we saw happen with Luke. So people speculate that what killed Luke was his use of that force power, the force projection. That it just drained all his energy and just killed him. But what kind of power is a power if it kills you when you use it? You can only use these powers if you're at that level, if you acquire them, if you practice them, and at least to some degree master them. After all, what kind of power would it even be if Ray lifted up all those rocks and then got a brain hemorrhage? Which she didn't. Now we have to stop and think, why was Luke on that island? That island is the best place in the galaxy to hide something. It's so secluded and the enemy can't detect you there. So everybody thinks Luke went to this island for some rest and relaxation. He had become some grumpy old man and wanted to get away from society. But I have a much better suggestion. What else was on that island besides Luke that was so important? The tree and the books of the Jedi. There's no better place in the galaxy to hide something that is important than this island. And that's why the Jedi hid these books there, so that they could never fall into the hands of the dark side. And Luke had a mission, a secret mission. And to accomplish this mission, he had to train further and become greater. And he had to study those books of the Jedi. The only person who could have told him where they are is Yoda. And lo and behold, Yoda turned up on the island later. So, Luke went to this island for the sole purpose of finding these books and studying them. And he spent years there studying them. He learned about the origins of the Force use, the origins of the Jedi and Sith lineages, their histories, their wars and battles together, and even the future, the prophecies. He read his own prophecy where he goes on to kill his father, Darth Vader, and the Emperor is destroyed. And he read much more that is contained within these books. And he also read the great training manual for the Force contained within these books, which teaches you not only how to awaken the Force and how to cultivate it, but how to become a Jedi, a Jedi Master, and how to work your way up the ladder and acquire greater and greater powers until you reach the apex itself, where you have near divine power. This was Luke's mission, because he was going on to fight an enemy greater 
than Darth Vader and the Emperor. And let's look back at that pivotal scene when Yoda's dying and he told Luke his destiny in the Force. He said, Luke, you must kill Darth Vader and you, Luke Skywalker, will bring balance back to the Force. And Yoda turned up on the island and destroyed the tree and burned up all the books because Luke had finished his study and so they could never fall into the hands of the dark side. So if Darth Vader and the Emperor died, and if Luke is remaining very powerful in the light side, then how is their balance in the Force? This is what people haven't realized. And do you know what this means? It means that this entire time even back when Vader and the Emperor were there, that there was another one in the dark side, more powerful than Darth Vader and the Emperor. He was laying in wait, in hiding, the entire time, pulling the strings from behind the scenes. He knows what's contained in the Jedi books. But he doesn't know everything in them, and he wants those Jedi books. So there never was balance in the Force. The prophecy is true. What Yoda said is true. Luke will bring balance to the Force. But that balance didn't come with the death of Vader and the Emperor. The balance will only come when the hidden emperor is killed. And this is why Luke went to that island, because he knew that emperor was there. He sensed that major, major disturbance in the force. He knew that this supreme power in the dark side was rising its head from the shadows. So Luke had to go to that island. And who would have instructed him but Yoda? Yoda knew where the books were. So Luke ventured to that island and studied the books for all those years. And that's where he learned the force projection power. That's where he learned the higher force powers. And what are some of the other higher force powers? The ability to cheat death the very ability that Anakin wanted so that he could save his wife. But it was this dark emperor, the hidden one, who was pulling all the strings. How do you think Anakin, Darth Vader was born of a virgin birth? Why do you think he was the chosen one? Why do you think Anakin was led along this path of so many seeming coincidences in his life it was his destiny. It's in the books of the Jedi. And it was this emperor who had some of this knowledge from those books, who knew the power to create life and to manipulate life. And he is the one that created Anakin. I hope you realize this ironic family tree now. The Jedi lineage, I believe, is genetic. It's use of the force power, I mean. Jedis, the Jedi lineage, has a more susceptible nature to the force. They're more in tune with it naturally. They can open themselves up to it. That's why they're force sensitive. Leia was force sensitive. Luke was force powerful. It's genetic and it's passed down. That's how Kylo Ren got it. He didn't just coincidentally get the force ability or coincidentally acquire it through just simple training as a normal human being. Normal humans can learn the ways of the Force, as was revealed in The Last Jedi. But there are those who are born with that ability. So Luke knew that he had to destroy this hidden emperor. 
and the hidden emperor knew that a new star had been born, Ray. And her quality was unique. She wasn't all in the dark side or all in the light side. She was in the middle. She wasn't gray. She was at the core, the old potential. It was her raw, untapped potential. The ability to swing full force into the dark side or the light side that made her so perfectly suited to function as the virgin sacrifice for the hidden emperor. If he could only obtain her, the source of raw power, then he would become unstoppable in the dark side. This hidden emperor, he knows some of the knowledge from the books of the Jedi. He knows some of the prophecies. He has learned how to acquire some of the higher powers that are spoken of in the books, and that is why he can create and manipulate life. But he cannot do everything. He does not have all the powers. He doesn't even have the powers that Luke has now. And he doesn't know all the prophecies that foretell Luke destroying him. But this hidden emperor can sense it. He can sense this in the force, and he knows that there is this threat against him this very old threat that has still remained. And this is why he's so desperate to get hold of Rey. It's his last chance at power. So he commissioned Snoke to go find Rey. And Snoke did. And when Snoke, who was really just a mouthpiece, a mere puppet for the Emperor, when his time in use was finished, Kylo followed orders and killed Snoke because Kylo was working for Snoke and the Emperor the entire time. And Kylo had no problems killing his father, and likewise, he'll have no issue bringing his sister Rey to the Emperor. You see, it's no coincidence that both Rey and Kylo are very powerful in the Force. It's because they're both born with the Force ability, because they are both Skywalkers with the Jedi lineage DNA. This is why Rey has so much power. She doesn't remember her parents or her childhood. This is why Kylo and Rey are so intuitive with each other and why they can share such profound visions. And Luke sensed all of this. Using his higher powers, he sensed it all in the Force and that's why he's preparing for this great battle against the Hidden Emperor. And Luke has learned the secrets of the lightsaber from the ancient Jedi books. When every Jedi picks up their lightsaber for the first time, they have a profound vision. And just where is this vision coming from? It's coming from the force within, contained within the mysterious and secret Kyber Crystals. The great secret that only the highest Jedis have ever learned, such as Yoda and Luke. I'll leave you with that. I hope you have enjoyed this ultimate Star Wars theory. And who was Finn? but a double agent working for the Hidden Emperor. That's how he found Ray.